So in part two of this tutorial, what I'm going to be looking at is creating a projectile that shoots from our character when we left click on the mouse button. So there's going to be a little bit of scripting involved, but the first thing that we need to look at is the basic logic here. How can we get a projectile to, uh, well, first of all, where would this projectile be coming from and where does it go? So what we need to do is create a spawn point which will serve as the base area that the projectile will spawn in, and then it will proceed outward from there. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do is uh, focus on my X perspective view, so I'm kind of looking at it from a like a 2D angle, and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new game object. So I'm gonna go up here and go to game object and hit create empty. So you'll see what it does, it just creates a XYZ transform. It's an empty game object. We don't have anything but the transform here on the inspector list for the components. This is gonna be our spawn point. So what I wanna do is I wanna put it somewhere outside of my character in front of him. And so I'm gonna put it like right about here. It's kind of awkward, but it will be shooting out essentially from his chest area. So ideally, this is where the ball, this is where our fireball is going to spawn from, and then it will shoot out this way as we, uh, once we put the proper script on it. So let me make sure, let me rotate all the angles. Okay, so I need to move it in front of my guy more. You want to make sure that it's in all the right places here. Okay, so it's centered on my guy and it's in front of him a little bit, so it should be shooting out from here and then there. The reason I don't want it to be like right here is because of collision. If my, if my fireball spawns right here, it's gonna automatically collide with the rigid body of my mesh and it's gonna blow up before it gets anywhere. So I need it to spawn a little bit outside of his, uh, his area so that that does not happen. Now, once I have it in the right spot, I'm going to go ahead and uh, left click on the game object here under the hierarchy, left click once and then left click again, and you'll be able to edit the name. So it's like a double click, but a delayed double click. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call this spawn point, all one word, capital S at the beginning, press enter. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drag this and put it on top of the first person character item. Now, the reason for this is because we want the spawn point to basically be tethered to the first person character, which is a camera. This will make sure that the spawn point follows the camera around wherever it goes. So say I move the camera right now up on the Y axis. If I look at the spawn point, it follows with the camera in that general direction. And then control Z to undo what I just did. Uh, this comes into play later when we get into the scripting of it, because say, I, say my, you know, let me play real quick. So as I look around, essentially I want that spawn point to follow my character along the, you know, wherever it is, wherever I'm looking. If I were to just put the spawn point as part of the FPS controller, it wouldn't exactly follow the rotation and movement of my camera. You know, this will allow me to basically move my character around with WASD. And as I look around, say I'm strafing left, but I want to look right, that spawn point's going to follow my camera, not not just my my body and the rotation and direction of my body. So now that the spawn point is there, what we need to actually do is create the functionality that's going to spawn the fireball and move it forward. Now the first thing I want to do to make this occur is we have to create a fireball object or some kind of game object that's going to be instantiated when we press the left click button. So in order to create the projectile, uh, what we're going to do is going to create a fireball object. Now to do this, I go up to game object and I hit 3D object and create a sphere. Uh, I do this because it automatically creates the collider that I need and the mesh filter and the renderer. However, I don't want my fireball to be this gray material. I want it to look fiery. So where it says element zero here under the mesh renderer, I'm going to click on the little circle over here and I'm going to look, um, in my list here, we have, let's see, there should be a standard asset called particle fireball. This should be in, imported with the particle systems package. So we'll go ahead and double click on that. And this will give the fireball a different look. So it should look a little bit better. Um, it's still probably not ideal, but for what we're doing right now, this will work. Uh, being that it's a material, you should be able to 
in the long run, you can create particle effects out of this and things like that. Uh, what I need to do though for this for this object, because if I hit play right now, I see it, but it doesn't fall with me. So even though it has the collider, um, it's not reacting with physics, and that's because I need to add a rigid body to this. So while I have the sphere highlighted, I'm going to uh, add component, and I'm going to go into physics, and I'm going to choose rigid body. Now, the rigid body will allow this to actually interact with physics. So now if I hit play, we'll see that the ball falls and it hits the ground. It's kind of hard to see it right now, but you'll see it's sitting there on the ground. Um, very, very faint there. If my shadow's on it, you can see it a little bit better. Um, so now at least the object falls to the ground. That's what we want. And what I want to do is add an audio source to this. So I'm going to hit add component. I'm going to go under audio and choose audio source. The reason for this is because I want the fireball to make, you know, a fire sound when it, uh, when it shoots out, when it moves. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, expand down the audio source. And where it says audio clip, what I'm going to do is find, uh, I have a fireball sound that I downloaded from a free sound archive. Uh, there's a lot of websites out there where you can get um, licensed free sound effects and music. So I recommend if you are working on like no budget and you don't have any of your own assets and you want something quick, you can go on Google and just look for like licensed free sound effects and music and you should be able to find some stuff. Uh, so where it says audio clip, I'm going to click the little arrow here. Well, actually, I'm going to show you something, how you can drag and drop. So I know it's this fireball asset, right? So while this is selected, I can just drag my fireball asset and hover it over the audio clip here. Uh, so I'm going to have it play on awake. Uh, the reason for this is basically when the fireball is spawned, I want it to play the sound effect. And then what I also want to do is where it says spatial blend, I'm going to move this up all the way to 3D. What this does is it dictates whether or not a sound effect is 3D or 2D. Now, the difference there is, say, uh, if something's 2D, it's always going to be coming at you in one direction, the same loudness. If we put it all the way to 3D, then this sound effect is going to diminish as it gets farther away from our audio source. So by specifying it all the way to the right on 3D, this basically makes this an entirely 3D sound effect. So as this fireball moves away from our character, we're not going to hear the fireball sound as loudly. Now, if I take a look at my other fireball prefab, I have this script attached to it called destroy object. So in order to create this script, what you can do is uh, you can right click in your assets area and you can hit create and choose uh, C sharp or JavaScript. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm doing things on JavaScript. The reason being is that I'm more familiar with JavaScript than I am C sharp. I'm gonna choose JavaScript and you'll see it creates a new script here. And what I'm going to call this is, uh, well, if we call it the same thing I call my other script, I can do destroy object. I'm going to put two at the end just because it's my second one. You only need to put destroy object. I, I don't put spaces or anything in it. I try and use code syntax as much as I can. And so once you create that script, we'll see destroy object two here. And if you left click on a script, you can see what that script is made up of, what all the code is. And I don't uh, have anything yet for destroy object two. So go ahead and double click on your destroy object script. And what's going to happen is Unity is going to open up Mono Develop, which is the IDE for Unity. It's where you do all your programming. Now, if you have questions about uh, the scripting or any questions about the programming, I urge you to hit the help button and hit the Unity API reference. It's going to bring you to their API reference, which shows you all the different methods, functions, classes, so on and so forth. And it gives you a ton of good information. So if you ever find yourself stuck, go there, uh, check it out, and you'll probably find yourself a solution. So if we take a look at my destroy object script that I have here, and basically you can copy this down, uh, what I have. What I'm doing at the very top, outside of everything, I'm creating a variable called explosion, which is a game object. Now, the reason I'm doing this, if I look back into my uh, Unity and I look at my Fireball prefab, 
Now look where my destroy object script is. You'll notice that it asks me there's an object here for explosion. Now what the explosion is, is basically an effect that I want to happen when the fireball collides with something, I want an explosion to occur. I want something to blow up. So that's all this is. And when you're using Unity script or when you're when you're programming like this, whenever you specify a variable outside of the function like this, it's going to create something you can specifically uh, designate here within Unity's uh, interface. And to sort of illustrate this more, if I click on my first person controller and I look at the FPS controller script, all of these items here are specified within this FPS controller script. If I open that up in all these different areas. So you have like all of these, you have serialized fields, um, you have cameras, bulls, floats, like all this stuff is outside of the update function and uh, the start functions and all of these different things. So these are all able to be modified by the user within Unity. So instead of just hard coding values for everything, you can be a little bit more uh, flexible by doing things this way. So if I look at my destroy object script again, I'm specifying that game object here, which I then uh, I will then put a game object that represents an explosion so that it becomes the explosion variable. And then what that explosion variable is doing is is being called whenever whenever the projectile is hitting something. So whenever this object that the script is attached to collides with something, what's going to happen is a clone is going to get created. And what this explosion clone variable is doing is it's creating an object of the explosion type. So whatever we're specifying here or whatever we're specifying within Unity and it's creating it at these positions, the, the uh, transform position and the transform rotation of whatever object this script is attached to. And then once that's run, basically it will destroy the, uh, the game object that the script is attached to. So, and also you can ignore this line. This was outdated code from Unity 3.5 that I've had to get rid of just so this compiles. So don't worry about writing that out. Um, so I know it's it's all a bit confusing, but once I actually throw the functionality into Unity, you'll see a bit more how this works. So let's hop back into Unity and let's click on our projectile here where it's listed as sphere over here. What I wanna go ahead and do is click on that twice and rename this to Fireball. I'm gonna call it Fireball 2 for myself because I already have a Fireball prefab. And now what I wanna do is add that script we created to this object. So literally what you can do is find the destroy object script in your list of assets down here. I can just drag and drop this onto the Fireball 2 item in my hierarchy. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna put the destroy object script in my component list. And now, where we have explosion, you see where it says none game object. That means that this item wants us to specify a game object. So to do this, uh, what we're going to do and what I recommend you do is download the detonator explosion framework. So the way you accomplish this is by going into the window menu at the top here and open up the asset store. If you don't have an account with Unity, um, there should be an option up here at the top right to log in or create an account. Go ahead and do so so that you can take advantage of the Unity Asset Store. Now, when you first open it up, you might be intimidated because there's a lot of dollar signs. Don't worry about that because there's plenty of free stuff you can get on the, uh, the Unity Asset Store, which is all we're dealing with. Uh, here at the top right where it says Search Asset Store, type in Detonator and do a search. The first item here is called the Detonator Explosion Framework by Ben Thrupp. Go ahead and click on this. This is a this is an asset package that gives you a lot of prefabs and scripts that you can do a lot of cool explosion stuff with. I'm going to be doing a bit of that in the tutorial, so I recommend uh, downloading this. When you open up the asset store in Unity, there's an option here to import. Go ahead and choose that. Or sorry, there's an option to download. Mine says import because I already have the package. So 
what you want to do is click download. Once it's done downloading, choose to import it, and then it will show you this list of stuff. You know, what do you want to import? Leave it all selected and choose import. Now that may, depending on your hardware, could take a minute, five seconds, however long. Once it's imported, you should see it come up under your list of assets as the detonator explosion framework. All right, so now we have the detonator explosion framework imported. What we want to do is click on the folder here under the assets section and go into prefab examples. This is a bunch of pre-made explosions that come with the detonator framework. The one I really like is um, this detonator-simple.prefab. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to left click on the projectile. Whoops, sorry, I'm going to left click on the projectile and then I'm going to drag the simple prefab. I'm going to hover it over where we see explosion under our script and then I'm going to let up on it. And what that's going to do is it's going to assign this prefab to that explosion. Now, one more thing that you're going to need to do to get it to behave like mine, left click on the detonator prefab down here and look at the components list. Yours probably just shows a transform and a detonator script. Now, mine has an audio source attached to it. The reason I did this is because I want an exploding sound to occur when this object actually gets called. So to do this, what you can do is hit add component, go under audio and hit audio source. And then again, you're going to need some kind of license free explosion sound effect. So I expand out the audio source and where it says audio clip, uh, I have this explosion sound. I just drag and drop that on top of there. And for output, mine says sounds, but don't worry about that right now. Leave yours blank. Um, I'll get to that a little, I'll get to that in a different tutorial. So now if you click on your fireball, fireball object, you should have the detonator simple listed under the explosion section. And now if you play, you should see this object fall and then it should hit the ground and blow up and you should hear it blow up like such. Kind of hard to see because this mesh on the ground is white. Let me see if I can change that. So choose your cube option and open up the mesh render and where it says default material, let's put that to like a, let's see, I'm going to do this navy smooth color. This should be a standard asset. So now my ground should be a little bit better and I can see this easier. Yeah, so now my object hits the ground, blows up. And what I want you to look at is under the hierarchy here. Pay attention to this when you hit the left, when you hit the play button. So we have Fireball 2 is existing, right? So when I play, it hits the ground and destroys itself. And you see a second item come up. Let me play it one more time. It's called Detonator Simple Dash or Detonator Dash Simple Clone. So the way this is happening is essentially our script is saying when this game object touches an object, it kills itself out of memory, which is the destroy function. And then what happens is it creates an explosion object in its place, which is where this uh, clone comes from. Detonator dash simple clone. So now that we can actually see this in action, let's revisit the script just to sort of drive home the point here. So the explosion game object we're specifying here, that is our detonator prefab. So the reason we specify that object is because we want to be able to have the free, we want to be able to have the flexibility of saying, what object do I want the explosion to be? So you can customize it and make it the way you want. If I wanted any kind of explosion, I could just as easily say, um, uh, let's see, there should be like a mushroom cloud one. I want to look at the mushroom cloud. Maybe not. Base chunks, crazy sparks. There we go. So I could just as easily switch from the detonator simple to the uh, detonator mushroom cloud object by just hovering over it. And now when my object blows up, it's like this gigantic enormous explosion that's completely unnecessary. And then, then I can go back to the destroy object script and I can put the simple one back on there. So that's the reason that we specify this out here, because if I wanted to use any sort of explosion, all I got to do is drag and drop the explosion there. And then it's going to adopt that game object as, you know, the one that gets instantiated. 
So in order to actually create that explosion, we have the on collision inner function, which is part of Unity's API. It accepts a collision object. So I just created one called collision of a collision type. And then in here, what we're doing is we're creating an explosion clone variable. And the, and the explosion clone variable is simply an instantiation of whatever object we're passing here at the location of wherever the current projectile is in 3D space and whatever the rotation is within 3D space. So the instantiate function is part of Unity script. It accepts the game object and then it accepts the uh, transform position rotation. And so by doing this, we're able to tell the explosion where to spawn. And what this line is doing for us is it's spawning the explosion on top of wherever our projectile was when it collided with something. So when it collides with the ground, the explosion gets instantiated at that exact position that collision occurred. And then afterwards, we're telling the script to destroy the uh, the fireball game object. When you tell it to destroy game object like this, what this is saying is destroy whatever object this script is attached to. So if I take a look at um, my fireball, the script is attached to the fireball two object. So when this destroy call, or sorry, when this destroy method gets called, and I pass game object as the item. What that's doing is it's saying destroy the fireball object from memory entirely. The reason you destroy things is because if you don't, it's going to just start stacking up. Um, once you start actually spawning objects and you start getting, say, five fireballs on screen at once, if you don't destroy those, they're just going to sit in memory and they're going to bog down your game. And you'll probably see that a little bit later. So this is why uh, when the object hits the thing, it destroys itself and it creates the explosion. Now, one other last detail here, when it hits the ground, you'll see that the clone lasts for about three seconds. The reason for that is because if I take a look at the simple detonator that we have, the detonator script that comes as part of that uh, detonator framework pack, has a couple of different options here. And one of those options is a duration call. So the duration, this is how long that object lasts before it kills itself off. Fortunately, I didn't have to write the script for this because it'd be a lot more complicated than I could likely do. But if you wanted that explosion to last in memory for longer, you could change this value to like five or something. Personally, I think two seconds is fine, so I'm gonna leave it there. Likewise, you could change the color of the explosion if you want, the size and all of that. Um, these are all small details I'm not going to mess with currently. But the main thing right now is when we play the game, we see the fireball fall and explode. That's what we want. So at this point, our fireball prefab is pretty much created. So to actually save this as a prefab, uh, what you do is you just grab it from the hierarchy, or sorry, left click and hold down and just drag and drop that down here where so where your assets are and let up and you're going to see that it creates a fireball 2 prefab for me for you it should be fireball just normal fireball and then what i can do you know with a prefab if i want i can just drag and drop that into the scene it's going to have the same properties as my other ones so um you also notice when i start adding duplicates it increments the number so instead of fireball 2 it's fireball 3. so that's the power of prefabs for you, and that's how we create our game object that's going to be used for the projectile. So up front, now that I have the prefab saved, I don't actually need this in my hierarchy, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So now that we have our spawn point and our fireball prefab, what we need to do is create a script that's going to allow us to left click and shoot that fireball from the spawn point. So to do that, we need to make a new script. So go ahead and in your assets area, right click in here and choose create, choose JavaScript. I've already got a projectile script here that I'm going to reference. So once you have, once you have your new script in here, go ahead and name it projectile. Uh, double click on the script to actually open it up in mono develop. So you can go ahead and copy this out onto uh, your script. You should already have the update function in here. Basically you're specifying these three variables and creating this if statement. And we don't need this uh, spawn point section. You can leave this out. 
Uh, that was something I did previously. It didn't translate into Unity 5. So up front, what we're doing is specifying three variables that the user can modify within Unity. We have a projectile variable of a rigid body type. We have a damage variable, and we have a spawn point variable of a transform type. And then under our update function, we have an if statement. And what the if statement's doing is it's looking for the left click button. What this line says is input.getButton down. Again, this is all part of Unity's API. Input.getButton down, and by calling on the fire one string, Unity knows that this means left click on the mouse. I believe it can also be enter or the return button on the keyboard. So what the if statement's looking at is if the left click button is being pressed down, it's going to execute what's within this block of code. So if I look at this line, I'm creating an object called spawn vector, which is a vector three object. Now the vector three um, object accepts three different values. If I take a look at the Unity API, we can see the vector three accepts an X value, a Y value, and a Z value, all three of these of which are float values. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because we need to create, sorry, we need to script the functionality that lets the object know where it has to spawn from and how it moves out from there. So what we're doing with the vector three object is creating an X, Y, and Z coordinate that is based on wherever our spawn points position is at the time that this script is being called. So you can see I'm calling on spawn point dot position dot X. And the reason that spawn point is going to be recognizable is because this script will be attached to our first person controller parent object. And as such, it's going to have access to all the children objects as well, such as the spawn point object, which is going to be, which is attached to our first person controller camera. So we're able to specify spawn vector as being the current X, Y, Z position of our spawn point within our 3D space. This is important because this allows us to spawn the object anywhere that the spawn point is looking. So if I'm looking my camera to the right, left, up, down, wherever, and I left click and I shoot the projectile, it's going to be looking at these values at that specific time, and it's going to be instantiating the object there. So then we can see what I'm doing on the second line is creating a clone of the rigid body type. And what the clone does is it instantiates its, it, it creates an instantiation of the projectile object, which is specified up here. And we're, and we're creating it at the spawn vector location. Again, the X, Y, Z location of our spawn point. That's why we created this vector three object here was because we need to tell it where to spawn. And we're also spawning it at the rotation of the spawn point. So now if we look at this line, what we're doing is messing with the clone's velocity. Now everything in Unity has, or every object in Unity has a velocity attribute, which basically determines the movement of an object, or the speed of the movement, let's say. What we're doing here is we are telling it to adopt the transform direction of the spawn point, and the reason is, is because we are in, the clone itself is being instantiated just now. And if we were to not specify it to adopt the transform direction of the spawn point, then the clone would just constantly shoot straight forward. It wouldn't follow our spawn point around with our camera. And if we take a look at the Unity API here, uh, the transform direction uh, item, it looks for a vector three value. So let's take a look back at the script we are telling it to use spawn vector three for that value, but we're calling on the forward function of the spawn vector, or sorry, of the vector three class. So if we look at this vector three dot forward, this specifies the, the forward motion of that vector three object. And we're basically telling it to be multiplied by 20. So at the end of the day, this line is essentially telling the clone to adopt the direction of the spawn point transform and move forward at a rate multiple of 20. So now if we actually go into Unity, now you have that script, go ahead and save it, uh, file save or control S. Now what we need to do is actually attach that script to something. So 
what we want to do is attach it to our FPS controller to the parent object. So let's go ahead and drag the projectile script onto FPS controller. And you can also, if you would rather, you can hit add component and go to scripts and you can find it here in the list and choose projectile. And once the projectile script's in here, you'll see all those variables that we created, the projectile damage and spawn point. So again, we have projectile, which is a rigid body. We have the damage value, which is just an integer number. And we have a spawn point, which is a transform. So for the projectile, what we want to do is specify our fireball prefab as that item. So find your fireball in your asset list and drag and drop it on top of the rigid body specification here. So see it adopts fireball two. And then for damage, we'll just leave it five. We're not going to do much with the damage in this instance. And then for spawn point, we want to actually specify our spawn point as the transform location. So over here under the hierarchy, just left click and drag your spawn point on top of the transform here. So now what should happen if we play this game and we left click, we should see a fireball fly out. And when it hits the ground, you should see it blow up. And if you rotate your screen around and shoot, you should see it fly in any location. 